Today is Trinity Sunday. It is a festival Sunday for us in the church where we focus on the majesty of the Trinity. The doctrine of the Trinity is drawn from the biblical revelation of God as Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier. On this Trinity Sunday, our Old Testament reading is from the book of Genesis. In today's passage from Genesis, we hear of the mysterious story of creation. There are parallels in the mystery and magic of both the creation and the Holy Trinity. How did creation come to be? It is not my intention to fully answer this question this morning. But it is important that we are connected with God's purpose in our lives. At every moment in the history of humanity, we learn that God has intentions for us. And it starts with the premise that God wants to be in relationship with us. In Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 and 2, the Bible says when God began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was complete chaos. And darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Here, we can say that God existed before all creation. God existed before all time. The whole world as we know it was created because God spoke creation into being. At first, there was no order to the earth. It was chaotic. It was empty. It was a formless void. In Genesis chapter 1, we are told that a force is present, a life-giving power. It is described as a wind or spirit from God. Yes, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God was there in creation. God the Holy Spirit. Then God said, let there be. God spoke creation into being. The Word of God was there in creation. In the beginning was what? Was the Word. Jesus is the Word of God. From Genesis chapter 1 verse 3 and on, the creation story is in the form of of a hymn, of a hymn, with a refrain, God said, God saw that, and it was good. God said, God saw that, and it was good. For instance, in verse 4, God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit were all there in creation. This creation story is divided into seven days or seven stages of creation. 
on the first day, God creates light. And so God overcame the darkness. God's ability to give names to light and, and darkness shows that God is in total control. In verses 26 to 27, then God said, let us, notice the us, who's the us? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Let us make humanity in our image to resemble us so that they may take charge of the fish of the sea, the birds in the air, the livestock, all the earth, and all the crawling things on earth. God created humanity in God's image. You were created in God's image. God is love. You were created in the image of love. You were created in the image of the Trinity. The Trinity is love. You were created in the image of the Trinity. In God's image, He created them, male and female. Then God blessed the newly created humans, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and master it. Take charge of the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and every living thing that crawls on the ground. God puts humans in charge of creation. With this charge, we are called to be stewards of creation, to serve as caretakers of earth's abundance. Caretakers. Caretakers. And yet, too often, we have chosen dominance, possession of, and control of the earth's resources. This perspective has led to both human and ecological abuse of the earth's resources. It has led to human exploitation and oppression. It has led to slavery and colonization and occupation. No, this is not God's intention and purpose for human life. Our purpose is to serve the earth. Our purpose is to honor every human life in a way that brings honor to God's purpose. In a way that brings honor to God's intention of a good creation. We are created in the image of God. We are created in the image of love. We are created to take care of God's creation. On the seventh day, God rested. God blesses the seventh day. God set it apart for rest and renewal. Here in the story, there is no evening. There is no evening of this day. And the reason being, the relationship between God and humanity continues. It continues forever. For us, in God, there's no darkness. 
In God, the light and the day are both alike. In God, we are never alone. God is with us at all times and in all places. Forrest Elliot Harris Sr. writes, There are few people in American history who exemplify the caring stewardship of the earth's resources as well as the Tuskegee University agricultural genius scientist, George Washington Carver. George Washington Carver discovered 300 uses for peanuts and hundreds more uses for soybeans and sweet potatoes and others. Carver did not patent or profit for most of his discoveries and products. He freely gave them to humanity. In fact, in fact, he declined an invitation to work for a salary of more than $100,000 a year equal to about a million dollars in today's dollars to continue his research on behalf of his country, men and women. Carver changed the South from being a one crop land of cotton to being a multi-crop farmlands with farmers having Hundreds of profitable uses for their new crops. When asked why he didn't patent many of his discoveries for his own gain, Carver said, God gave them to me. How can I sell them to someone else? You see, Carver knew his true place in God's creation. And he did not organize his discoveries around himself. But rather, around what made for the well-being of the whole. Carver's spiritual and intellectual feelings were fully connected with nature's God. My sisters and brothers, can you imagine? Can you imagine what the world would be like if we were truly understand that all that we have and all that we are comes from God? Can you imagine the splendor of a good creation is God's gift to humanity. God gave them to me. God gave them to me. God gave them to you. And God said, be fruitful and increase. Be fruitful and increase is God's spoken word to all living creatures. God is creator of the universe. God continues to create the world anew. The earth serves as a setting for the human community. Genesis chapter 1 works with the science of its time to tell of divine power, to tell of divine purpose, and to tell of the unique place of humans. In today's gospel passage, Jesus appears to the eleven disciples on the mountain, which in Matthew's gospel is a sacred place of revelation. This is the same mountain that Jesus took his disciples before, when he was transfigured before them. And God said, This is my son 
whom I have chosen. Listen to him. Listen to him. Here we are in Matthew chapter 28. Right before he left this world, Jesus, the word of God, who was there in creation, said to his disciples, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, and remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. My Lord, my Lord. You see, my sisters and brothers, Jesus has received all authority from God the Father. So now, so now, he sends us out. He sends his followers out to all nations. Not just Israel, but to all nations. We are sent. When Jesus' followers go out into the world, we are commissioned to baptize in the possession and protection of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We are commissioned to baptize in the name of the Trinity. You see, the doctrine of the Trinity is drawn out of the biblical revelation of God as Creator, Redeemer, and sanctifier. When we see, when we feel, when we confess the three persons of one God, our relationships with God's creation and with one another should reflect the infinite love, the infinite care, the infinite neutrality embodied in the Trinity. Amen? This is both a mystery and a paradox. It is a reminder that God is more, so much more than we can understand. So, my sisters and brothers, on this festival, Trinity Sunday, as we celebrate the power and majesty of the Trinity, we are reminded of our own relationship with the Trinity. That we are made in the Trinity's image and likeness and therefore are all responsible for sharing in the stewardship of our world and its people. Yesterday we had our vestry retreat. We gathered together to plan and dream about our future. We spent quality time focusing on how we can engage the community around us. Several vestry members raised the importance of more community engagement. How do we host events on our grounds? Not just for our members, but also for the larger community. How do we feed the hungry? Many of our brothers and sisters are dealing with food insecurity. We glorify God through such acts of generosity. Such community engagement will also help us grow in our walk with Jesus Christ. Oh, it is about following Jesus' example to welcome the stranger and provide for those in need. And so, my brothers and sisters, all that we have, all that we have, God gave us. All that we see around us came from God. 
Everything God made is good. God cares how we live our lives in the here and now. And so, may we live in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit.